Hello, I'm Tana, your MLC tutor. All right, in this video, I'm going to do a previous SOA exam problem on Hattendorf's theorem. Um, it doesn't seem like there have been very many of these on exams, but it doesn't hurt to know it, and I had someone request it. So you never know, it might be on the upcoming exam. So in this problem, we were given that for a fully discrete two-year term insurance of 400 on X, so I'll just write that 2 minus, we're given that the annual effective interest rate is 10%, that the premium, and they tell us that the contract premium equals the benefit premium, so this premium we know is determined by the equivalence principle. We're given that that's 74.33. They give us that the reserves for this insurance at time one is 16.58. Um, and we want to calculate the variance of the loss at issue. So my first step here was to recognize, I mean, besides the fact that this is in my section on Hattendorf's theorem, I think you can recognize that you would want to use that um, because essentially Hattendorf's theorem is just a recursion formula for the variance of the loss random variable. Um, if we want to calculate the variance of the loss random variable um, at issue at time zero, I think it's reasonable to see, you know, they gave us reserves at time one, we have the premium, so we can probably calculate the variance of the loss random var variable at time one, and then use that recursive formula to get the variance of the loss random variable at time zero. So the first step is just to recognize that you're going to need to use Hattendorf's theorem, or that at least you can use Hattendorf's theorem to get the variance of the loss of issue random variable. Um, and that is going to be, this is, this is the variance of your incurred losses. And I did another video on how they came up with this formula. So if you want to know intuitively why this makes sense, I would go check that out. But this is just, this is the formula for the variance of the incurred losses. And this is the variance of the losses at one. So it's um, V squared times the difference between our benefit and our reserves for the next period, which we're given both of those. We have that the premium, I'm sorry, that the benefit is 400 and that our reserves in the next period, our reserves at time one, are 1658. So the difference between those squared times um, Qx times Px plus V squared Px times the variance of the loss random variable at time one. So this is what we're trying to find. I put in already what we have. We have the interest rate for the V squared. You can see that we're going to need Qx, or alternatively Px, and we're going to need the variance of the loss random variable at time one. So first let's find Qx and Px. All right, so to get Qx and Px, I used a recursive formula on the reserves. So we're given our reserves at time one, and I know that the reserves at time zero will be zero because we've calculated the premiums by the equivalence principle. So at time zero, we expect to have a loss of zero, so we don't have any reserves. So I have that the reserves at time zero, which are zero, um, plus the premium equals either you die Qx and you get the benefit of 400 discounted back one period, or you live Px and you get the new reserves at time one, which were given as 1658, again discounted back one period. So the only thing we don't have, again I said reserves at time zero are zero, we have the premium, the reserves at time one, the benefit, the interest rate, the only thing we don't have here is Qx, I can write Px as 1 minus Qx, so you can solve for that, and you should get Qx equals 0.17. So the only other thing that we need in our formula, ultimately, to get 
the variance of the loss at issue random variable is the variance of the loss random variable at time 1. So that will be our next step. Okay, so in calculating variance, I'm sort of partial to setting up a table of all the different possibilities and their associated probabilities. So that helps me sort of see better what's going on. Um, here we're trying to calculate the variance of the loss random variable at time 1. And also, I mean, ultimately here we're trying to calculate the variance of the loss random variable at time 0. You could do it this way with the table too. It's just really complicated. So if you know Hattenberg's theorem, it's probably easier to go through it that way. Um, but anyways, just for the loss random variable at time 1 now. Because this is a two-year term insurance, there are only two possibilities for the loss random variable at time 1. Either you die, and the loss random variable is one thing, or you live, and it's another thing. So the probability of dying, let's see, at 1, I'd be qx plus 1, and then living is px plus 1. If you die, then you get the benefit of 400. Okay, it's paid at the end of the year, so discounted back one period, less the premiums that you got at the beginning of the year, which were 74.33. And for that, you should get, our interest rate was 10%. You should get 289.31. Okay, or you live. If you live, you don't have to pay anything out. So just if, if they live, you don't have to pay anything out because it's a death benefit. Um, but you do still get the premium at the beginning of the year. So you have a negative loss equal to the amount of the premium, 74.33. Okay, now here, one other thing came up that we're going to use to calculate, and that is the um, mortality probabilities at x plus 1. So to find my mortality probabilities at x plus 1, I again used recursion on reserves, just like I did for our qx and our px. Um, here, I, um, we want to go between the reserves at time 1 and 2 to get the um, probability of dying or surviving at 1 in that time period. Um, so we're given the reserves at time 1 is 1658, and the premium is 74.33. We have Reserves at time 1 plus the premium that you just got is equal to either you die, qx plus 1, and you get, again, that benefit of 400 discounted back one period, or you survive, px plus 1, and you get a new reserve at time 2 discounted back one period. Except that this is just a two-year term insurance, so at time 2, there are no more reserves because it's done. Nothing else can happen. So this is 0. Um, and then, of course, this whole thing becomes zero. And you can solve for your qx plus 1, which is 0.25. Okay, so now I have um, the different values that our loss random variable at 1 can take on, and I have all their associated probabilities, so I can calculate the variance. There are a couple different ways you can do that. You can either first, you can calculate the first and second moments, so um, we know that the variance is going to be the second moment minus the expected value squared. So you could do um, 289.31 squared times its associated probability plus negative 74.33 squared times its associated probability. That's your second moment. And then, of course, for the expected value, you just have this product plus, plus this product. So the second moment minus that squared. That's one way to do it. Or you can take, um, you can calculate the expected value, the sum of these products, and then the difference between each value that this can take on and the expected value squared times the probability and sum those up. Either way, um, you should get for the variance of our loss random variable at time one, you should get. The variance is 24,793.39. So 
now we have everything we need to get the variance of our last random variable at time zero. Okay, so just to sum up everything we did, we wanted to find the variance of the loss at issue random variable or the loss random variable at time zero. Um, we know that by Pattendorf's theorem, which is this, which is pretty much just a recursion formula, um, that that equals, um, that that's going to equal v squared px qx times the square of the difference between the benefit and the reserves um, one period from now, which is k is, is equal to zero, plus one, plus v squared px times the variance of the last random variable at time one. So we were given the benefit, we were given the reserves at time one, um, we were given the interest rate, we needed to find the um, qx and px, which we did by recursion on reserves, and we needed to find the variance of the last random variable at one, which I did using a table. Um, since it's a two-year term insurance, we know that that can only take on two different values, one associated with living and one associated with dying. So I made a table with those two values and their associated probabilities, which were qx plus one and px plus one, again, which I did using recursion on reserves, which I found using recursion on reserves. Um, and then you just plug everything in and you should get 34,150. Um, that's it for this problem. I will just note one more thing, um, is that for the loss, um, the variance of the loss random variable at time one, you saw in my table that it can only take on two values because it's a two-year term insurance, so the loss at time one either takes on one thing if you live or one thing if you die. So we could have actually used the Bernoulli shortcut for... Um, to calculate that variance. Um, just a side note, I have a video on how to do that as well if you want to check that out. So I hope that made sense to you. If it didn't, please let me know and happy studying.